Okay, so this is going to be part two of my very, uh, very overdue uh, video on geometric sequences. So the idea is we're given two terms. We've got that a sub 2 equals 32 and a sub 5 equals negative 4. We want to find the value of a sub 9. So the idea is, again, we don't know what the first term is. We know that the second one is equal to 32. We don't know the third one. We don't know the fourth one. The fifth one, we're told that's equal to negative 4. We don't know the sixth, seventh, eighth. And we want to figure out the ninth one. So definitely, I'm going to jump into things a little bit here. So if you didn't see part one, I'll put a link to it. Uh, you may want to check that out before you watch this one. And again, from part one, what we saw was we saw that the general formula for a geometric sequence is we have that a sub n equals a sub 1 multiplied by r raised to the power of n minus 1. So whatever the subscript n is here, we're going to use 1 less as our exponent. And to remind you, a sub 1, what is a sub 1? Well, that's the first term of the sequence. And our value r, that's the common ratio. That's what you're multiplying by to get to the next, the next term. Well, we're given some information here already. We're given that a sub 2, we're told that that equals 32, and we're given that a sub 5 equals negative 4. So to use that formula, we really want to figure out two things, right? We want to figure out what is a sub 1 equal. We don't know what a sub 1 equals. And we want to figure out what r equals. We also don't know what that is. Well, I'm going to write. So I'm going to use this formula. So it says a sub 2, that's equal to a sub 1. Again, that's the first term, which we don't know. And we multiply that by r, which we also don't know. The only thing we can fill in, really, is this exponent. We can fill in this, this exponent. So whatever our subscript down, is down here, we're going to take 1 away. Well, since our subscript is equal to 2, I'm going to use a subscript of, or excuse me, an exponent of 1. And we'll do the same thing for a sub 5. OK, well, generically, we know it's going to be equal to the first term multiplied by r raised to the exponent. Well, again, since our subscript is equal to 5, we know that our exponent is 1 smaller, which is 4. OK, so now I'm going to use these two equations. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to figure out, I'm going to find the value for r. And then the second thing I'm going to do is then I'm going to go back and I'm going to find our value for a sub 1. And at that point, we now know the formula for a sub n. And then I'm going to use that to compute. I'm going to use that to compute the value of a sub 9. And you could use it to compute any, you know, any term at this point, but we just happen to pick the ninth term. So that's our game plan here. We'll find r, then we'll find a sub 1. We now know a formula. Well, hey, then now we can figure out a sub 9. OK, so I'm going to use these two. Um, I'm going to set up a fraction is what I'm going to do, a ratio. It doesn't matter how you do it. Um, I usually like to take the, the term that has the larger exponent. I'm going to make that my numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some division. So I'm just going to do a little bit of division here. OK, so we said that negative 4, we said that that equals a sub 1 multiplied by r to the fourth power. So I'm just writing out what we had right here. Negative 4 is equal to a sub 1 multiplied by r to the fourth. And now I'm going to divide. Well, we said that 32. Right, 32 was equal to a sub 1 multiplied by r. And we said r to the first power, so I'm just going to write that simply as r. Well, now notice what we can do. We can start simplifying. So now we're going to simplify. Well, on the left side, OK, so a negative divided by a positive, that's a negative. Um, we can divide both 4 and 32 by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 32 divided by 4 is 8. So we can reduce negative 4 over 32 to the fraction negative 1 eighth. Notice on the right side that I've got 
and in both the numerator and the denominator, I have this value a sub 1. Well, I can cancel that out. It's like having common factors, right? It's like having 10 times 3 over 10 times 7. Well, if there's a 10 in the numerator and a 10 in the denominator, I can just cancel those out. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just canceling out my a sub 1s. So then I'm going to be left with r to the 4th over r to the 1st. But again, we can use properties of exponents here. Uh, so r to the 4th over r to the 1st, that's just going to leave us with r to the 3rd power. So now I just want to figure out r, and I think, okay, well, really what I'm doing is I'm taking the cube root of the right side. So I'm also taking the cube root of the left side. So I'm really thinking, what number multiplied by itself three times is negative one-eighth? Well, let's see, negative one times negative one times negative one, that's going to give me negative one. And two times two times two, that's going to give me eight. So the cube root of negative one-eighth, that's just going to be negative one-half. And again, on a calculator, um, you could do like negative one-eighth, wherever your exponent key is. Sometimes they look like this little carrot or whatever. Um, so you would do negative one-eighth raised to the one-third power. And you'll get negative one-half, or your calculator will probably spit out negative 0.5. Okay, so that's part one now. We've now got our r value. We've now got our r value. So I know generically that our nth term, a sub n, that's going to be a sub 1, which I still don't know. So I'm going to go back and fill in this formula. Um, a sub n is going to be a sub 1. Well, we now know our r value. That's negative 1 half raised to the n minus 1 power. Well, now you can use either one of these equations. You can use that 32 equals a sub 1 multiplied by r, or you can use that negative 4 equals a sub 1 multiplied by r to the 4th. I like to use the one with smaller exponent just because it makes, to me, the arithmetic easier, you know, if you happen to be doing it by hand. Okay, so we said that, um, what did we have here? So our second term, so a sub 2, Again, my a's tend to look like 9's here a little bit. Sorry about that. So that's supposed to be an a. Let me rewrite that even. So a sub 2. We said that was equal to 32. And again, I'm just going to fill in this formula on the right side. That's going to be equal to a sub 1 multiplied by negative 1 half. This is our r value. We now know what it is exactly. But again, we still use the same relationship. So whatever the subscript was, it was a 2. We take 1 away. So we'll just get to the first power. Okay, well, I'm trying to solve for a sub 1, so in this case, let me get another piece of paper here. And certainly once you do a couple of these, you'll be able to go through these a lot faster than what I'm doing. I'm really trying to take it, take it slow here. So we have 32 equals a sub 1 multiplied by negative 1 half. Well, I'm trying to solve for a sub 1. Well, to get rid of the negative one-half, I could divide both sides by negative one-half, or equivalently, multiply both sides by negative two. So negative one-half, well, a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive. One-half times two is just one. So on the right side, we're just going to be left with a sub one, and that's what we were trying to do, is solve for a sub one. Well, negative two times 32, that's going to be a negative times a positive, which is a negative. 2 times 32 is going to be 64. So now I know my starting term. My first term is going to be negative 64. So we've got our, our first term. We've already deduced that our r value is equal to negative 1 half. So what we can conclude is we know that we know our general formula, a sub n, that's going to be equal to the first term, which is negative 64 multiplied by our r value, which is going to be negative 1 half. And then again, we just take that to the n minus 1 power. So that's our general formula in this case. Um, I should have probably computed this beforehand, but I didn't, so we'll, we'll do it by hand here. So that means that a sub 9, what's that going to give us? Well, that's going to be negative 64. That's my first term. We'll take negative 1 half. And we'll raise that to the power, um, again, if we take whatever our subscript is, which is 9, 
and we subtract 1 away from it. So 9 minus 1 is going to give us an exponent of 8. And now let's just simplify. Okay, so this is going to be a little obnoxious um, if you had to do this by hand. One thing that I'm going to observe, so the first thing you'll want to simplify is the exponent. You'll want to take the negative 1 half and raise it to the 8th power. Well, if I take a negative number and raise it to an even power, I know that's going to be, it's going to be positive. So negative 1 to the 8th is just going to be positive 1. 2 to the 8th, what is 2 to the 8th? I don't know, so I'm going to even write it all out. So we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Obviously, if you had a calculator, you could do this a lot faster. So let's see, that's 2 to the 4th so far. So we need another 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that's 2 to the 8th. And again, there's a lot of different ways that you could simplify this down. Maybe you already know what 2 to the 8th is. 64... Um, is actually a power of 2. So let's see, 2 to the 1st, that's 2. 2 squared, that's 4. 2 to the 3rd, that's 8. 2 to the 4th, that's going to be 16. 2 to the 5th, that's another, multiply by 2. And then 2 to the 6th, that's going to be 64. Okay, so I've got a negative number times a positive number, so I know my final answer here is going to be negative. 64, we said that's really 2 to the 6th. So I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's, uh, did I write too many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I put too many 2's in there. So let's get rid of that one. Okay, so I've got 2 to the 6th. Again, that's my 64. That would be over 2 to the 8th. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now we can just start canceling common factors. So we can cancel out a 2, another 2, another 2, another 2, another 2, another 2. We still have multiplication by 1 in the numerator. Again, we got rid of that 2 because I wrote too many. So I'm left with 1 over 2 times 2. Well, 1 over 2 times 2, that's going to be 1 fourth. Let's not forget about our negative. That's going to be our solution here. So again, writing out by twos is a little obnoxious. We, we also said that, you know, we just said that 64 was 2 to the 6th. So you could have just done properties of exponents. You know, we said 64. Okay, we know it's a negative. 64 is 2 to the 6th. Uh, we've got 1 over 2 to the 8th. So I'm just showing an alternate way to simplify this without writing it all out. So we've got 2 to the 8th. Well, again, that's a negative. 2 to the 6th over 2 to the 8th. If we simplify, uh, I've got a, uh, this base of 2. If I do 8 minus 6, that's going to be 2 squared. And again, that's going to give us negative 1 fourth. So a different way of simplifying it. So, okay, kind of a, a slightly long example here, but just because I think that exponent was a little big. But the basic, basic process, again, write out your terms generically. Okay, so just write them out generically. First goal is to find r, so to do that again, you'll just set up a, a fraction. That's the first thing you'll do, is set up a fraction. You'll have to take some sort of root, usually at this point, to figure out your r value. Once you have your r value, fill that in. Fill in the r value, go back and find your first term. And then once you have your, your first term, where'd it go? My next formula. Once you find your first term, you now know r, you now know a sub 1, you now know a formula set for a sub n, so then it's just a matter of filling that in and simplifying it down. So, all right, I hope this example makes some sense and helps you out out there. If you need to see another example like this, let me know and I'll be happy to do another.